Thank, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee, and thank you, Witnesses. Uh, I want to commend the trade union representatives that have appeared today, first of all, for their efforts, not just on this issue, but on many issues over years. And indeed, uh, some may be aware, some may not. I was a branch secretary myself uh, for a number of years in a workplace in the Unite Trade Union, so I do have sympathy and support uh, and awareness of the work that you do. Um, so, to put in context at the outset, because I am a representative of the lockdown counties, as they're now known, um, I, I just want to briefly recap on what's actually happened in the last, uh, I suppose, week uh, for Kildare, Leash, and Offaly. The impact it's had upon businesses. Uh, we've seen small businesses, which are, of course, employers in their own right, um, and of course, are, are trading, who had just picked up the pieces and began to get up the ground again uh, in terms of trading and in terms of restoring consumer confidence and their own confidence in their operations and bringing workers back into those workplaces and investing in personal protective equipment and screens uh, and all the rest of it. They've seen that, and of course, stocks which were bought in for, for what they hoped was a, a, the remaining tourist season, uh, perishable stocks now, now written off and wiped. Um, and not only those businesses which have been forced to close, but the business around them, the likes of fashion boutiques, the likes of uh, retailers who are seeing such a, a plummet in footfall uh, that actually that, that, that as the impact that it's had on the ground in the business community. Um, and of course, being a destination uh, shopping venue in many cases, like likes of Nace, Kildare Village, etc., uh, nobody's coming in from outside because they're not allowed to, uh, quite frankly. So there's been a huge knock-on to local business, the local economy. In terms of people who would feel they've done everything right, they've worn their masks, they've uh, minded themselves, they've stayed indoors, they've social distanced and all the rest of it. And any chance of a staycation is gone, any chance of family breaks are gone, uh, by and large people have cancelled uh, en masse. Uh, so not, not, not only uh, are there all the implications, but then they can't even get away themselves. Uh, and I suppose that is psychologically, uh, that, that is damaging and, and that is, uh, there's a huge blow to the, to the county. And what, I suppose what really compounds it is the, the view that it is concentrated on the meat plants and the outbreaks uh, and the particular clusters, but three counties are paying the price for potentially three plants or four plants. Uh, and there's a number of boundary conditions, etc., which uh, I, won't, I don't have time to go into, but there are certain estates even in Kilmalom, say in Blessington, where the back cul-de-sac is in Kildare. To actually get out of their estate in the morning, they've got to break the law uh, because of the way the lockdown was done. Um, in any event, I want to move on to questions to the committee. One thing that I thought was um, uh, stark in the submissions, I read all the submissions this morning, and thanks for the uh, presentation today as well. The state put in place a number of supports to help workers and help, I suppose, the, the wider economy, the wider society during the pandemic. But it strikes me that these have not applied, or have not been able to be applied within the sector. So we saw about temporary accommodation, we saw about accommodation issues. Uh, despite there being an eviction ban put in place, we saw that workers were forced to move from one place to another uh, and often, often cohabit. We saw workers afraid to take sick leave, afraid to ring in sick, despite the pandemic payment being there uh, and temporary wage support schemes, etc. So it, it strikes me as a general rule that there's many of the state supports were not actually available, whether through ignorance, through lack of awareness, possibly lack of promotion within the employment, within the, those workplaces, uh, and all those issues, I think, have to be examined. Um, I want to hop in on one issue, because uh, uh, Patricia King has mentioned this, and this is the notification of, of workplace uh, disease, and the definition of personal injury, uh, and the idea that um, if somebody trips on a floorboard, uh, or, 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 you know, injures himself on a piece of machinery in, in a factory, that that is notifiable to the Health and Safety Authority. If somebody presents a coronavirus, or another infectious disease, that is not. Um, and I think what we've heard from Patricia King and others say in recent, uh, today uh, and in recent days is that a whole plethora of sanctions, of inspections, of powers uh, that would kick into being were that in that uh, statutory instrument, were that part of the Health and Safety Authority framework, uh, would, be, would be there. The, the power of the state could be brought to bear. But because this disease is not listed uh, as a notifiable illness, uh, then it, that does not happen. But I want to highlight, and I studied the regulations again this morning, um, and I suppose what, what, when I see the 2016 regulations, uh, and we've heard that the Tarnister could actually make a, a one-line change to those regulations to in introduce infectious disease or coronavirus as a notifiable illness, but actually it was there because it was there previously. It was there in the 2011 regulations, and it was there in the 2007 regulations, and in the 2016 regulations, it's deliberately taken out. Uh, and I turn to page three of those regulations, and I see personal injury does not include any disease, occupational illness, or impairment or mental condition. And that, to me, is the real scandal here. Not that it's not there at the moment. It should be, of course, uh, but that it was previously there and was actually removed. So I'd ask for the, the witnesses' uh, opinion on that. Thank you. If the witnesses could between them speak for no more than a minute because I want okay. to um, I, I, uh, Chairman, I agree with uh, the Deputy and thank you for the um, query. Uh, you're right, uh, this regulation 224 uh, put in in 2016 and uh, you're quite right, excludes now personal injuries. Now, now, in the actual act itself, 
personal injury is defined then, uh, accident is defined as personal injury and personal industry do, uh, injury does include any disease, infectious disease. But the regulation then in 2016 came along and it excluded it. Now, my own judgment at the time and thinking, I think that the employers are very hung up about the mental health issue uh, there and that they didn't want uh, to have this onerous, what they believed, that that's my own judgment of what was going on at that particular time. But this regulation was signed up to anyway. Now, what can happen is Section 58 of the Act allows the Minister allows the Minister to bring an amended regulation before the House of the lay it before the House of the Oireachtas, but it becomes valid from the time of its making unless and until it's amended by the Oireachtas. So we could resolve this problem very quickly. So far, uh, the, the government has said, the Tarnish has said he, he was looking at it, and the HSA have, in my judgment, obstructed um, our efforts to have this, um, because they're now talking about it would require a major risk impact assessment. There's nothing about that in the legislation. I can't see it anyway. And so therefore, uh, we need to put this right. We don't have time. This virus is, is uh, doing all of the damage that you outlined in your contribution. So we just need to put it right and we need to just get a grip of this and do it.